What is up you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel today. I have a fun little video for you guys because I just picked up one of the new YSL Beauty quads, the mini clutch quads. Now there are definitely a few of them. I think there are about eight of them. I picked up the one that I really wanted and I cannot wait to demo this for you guys. I need to enclose that I have I had such a bad makeup day today, like foundation wasn't working, eyebrows couldn't get it together. So I'm a little bit insecure while I'm sitting here, but I hope uh, it kind of came together before I do the demo, but I just need to get that out of the way. I really had a bad time trying to put on my makeup today. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to the quad. This is my first YSL eyeshadow purchase. So it's definitely a first impressions for me. I'm pretty interested to see how this formulation looks on the eyes and how it kind of compares to other formulations. So let's just get into it. So this is the outside packaging. It is YSL gold. It's pretty hard to see on the camera because it's so reflective. So I try to do some close-up shots out of like, I think the eight palettes. There are a few that are very colorful, but most of them are very wearable. I got my hands on probably the most wearable one called 100 Stora Dolls. It says here it has a net weight of four grams. So four shades, one gram each. I also try to make a shot of the ingredient list, which you'll see here. It has a 24 month shelf life and the shadows are made in Italy. It is a mini clutch palette. So I think the star of the show, the outside packaging is of course this clutch design. It's based on the YSL clutches, like the actual purses that they have. And I think it's a pretty spot on interpretation in terms of an eyeshadow palette. I actually really like the way that they did this. I think it's one of the most beautiful palettes currently in my collection. It is super luxe looking. On the back, you'll see it's just that YSL gold again with a bunch of holes, which I first thought maybe this was refillable. It isn't. These holes are actually where the brushes are. So I guess your brushes can air out a little bit. When you open up the palette, it's pretty easy to open if I say so myself. You see two brushes and then you'll see, of course, the eyeshadow portion. You see these four shades. Now on the website, I actually thought that these were gonna be as large in terms of palettes, as large as the Guerlain palettes, but the Guerlain pans are a little bit larger and also the eyeshadow portion are also a bit bigger. So here you'll see Guerlain on one side and then you'll see YSL on the other side and you definitely see that YSL has less shadows than the Guerlain side. Both of them are made in Italy but the Guerlain has a six month shelf life and probably has a little bit more net weight. It says here it says four times 0.05 ounces or four times 1.5 grams. So there's 0.5 grams more in the Guerlain palettes than the YSL palettes. I also want to state that the Guerlain has a baked formula, whereas the YSL is not a baked formula, but it is made in Italy. Similarly to Guerlain, the Tom Forge shadow palettes also have a larger pan size. So this is one of their cream formulas, and this is Tom Ford's Spoky Quartz, also made in Italy and this one has a net weight of nine grams so almost double more than double the amount than the YSL and the reason why I mentioned this is because I paid 68 like euros I believe for this YSL palette it wasn't a rounded number I think it was like 6890 or something like that so it's up there in price when it comes to you know Guerlain YSL and Tom Ford all of them kind of have the same price nevertheless I still wanted to try this and Story Dolls gives me such beautiful neutral brown tone vibes I actually love shadows like this I have these in my collection like already but I'm definitely trying this out because of the formula and I just have really high expectations of these it just looks like a beautiful palette and you you know what I don't mind having the same colors in a different formula because I like to compare them but I also want to just find the best of the best now the moment I saw this quad I actually thought about something else in my collection which is this one by Chanel this is part of the tweed collection this is the brunette rose by Chanel Chanel also really up there in price this was more expensive than the YSL 
and it has a two gram net weight. So less than the YSL, actually half. So first I'll show you swatches of the YSL palette on its own, and then I'll show swatches next to the Chanel Brun and Rose palette. And here you can definitely see some comparisons of the two. I think both of them were probably gonna give a very similar eye. Now I know not everybody is a big fan of the Chanel eyeshadow formula. It's very fair, it is blendable, but it doesn't give a lot of impact. I like to go in with the shimmer shades with a like wet brush to give a little bit more impact. So check out my demo on this palette on my channel. If you also want to see how that looks on the eyes in the end, because I am going to, of course, demo the YSL palette as well. And actually, I, the formula doesn't feel the same, so I'm expecting a little bit more impact. I'm not sure, but I'm expecting a little bit more. I also decided to do some comparison swatches to the Lisa Aldridge Vega palette. Now, Lisa Aldridge eyeshadow formula is a little bit more pigmented. It's not like the Chanel one. And the Vega palette is definitely very cool toned and leaning, and you'll see that in the swatches as well. You see it's a little bit more gunmetal, a little bit more gray toned, definitely more cool tones. For your cool toned lovers out there, a very nice palette to have. Also, Lisa Aldridge has really beautiful packaging, and Lisa Aldridge has refillable like slots for her shades, so you can mix and match all the shadows. I wish the YSL had these refillables as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't. It does seem like you could maybe like pop some out <laughs> but unfortunately it's not refillable it does have a very decent sized mirror over here and you know what it looks and feels very luxe it is plastic so maybe the back side is not the most luxe but it does look it looks so nice guys this is just so fun to have in your collection and to travel with anyway so we got some of the swatches out of the way a little bit about the comparisons when it comes to tom ford and guerlain i actually want to do a separate video only talking about the consistency if you guys want to see that please let me know in the comment section down below so i can go into like the formulations a little bit more with the higher end palettes or the luxury palettes like YSL. But for right now, I just want to put this on the eyes and I want to see how these perform. So I'm going to zoom you guys in and let's get started. I just grabbed some brushes here. Most of them are Refer and Sonia G. And let's just slowly build up the shades. I definitely want to use all of the shades. That's the nice thing about having a quad ready. But I don't really know where to start. I think I'm going to start this sort of taupey brown in the bottom corner. The only thing I'm wearing on the eyes right now is the YSL Touche Cla concealer and a little bit of powder. I did decide to buy the concealer as well, but I want to do a Sephora haul video where I talk about the concealer. Again, I want this video to be kind of a quick video just talking about this eyeshadow formulation. So this is a very nice, sheer, very sheer color. Contours the eye. It's a little bit more um, shimmery than I expected. I think it's swatched more satin, but I don't think it's ugly looking. Very subtle. Let's put some on the other side. Went in with a little bit more of a heavy hand. Yeah, this is more of the shape that I wanted. Trying to mimic the same shape. So more faint and fair than I expected, um, but I do like the finish. So I'm just trying to talk you guys through what I'm expecting. I wanna go in with this deeper shade. I'm going in with the Refer 02 brush. The first brush that I used is the Sonia G Blender Pro. And now going in with the Refer 02. Ooh, again, it's very soft. Building up the pigments a little bit and then I'll blend it out because I think all these shadows will blend out like a dream. But they will sheer out when you blend them, I think. So let's first just try to put general shape down before I start blending. Going in with this one, this is the Morphe M573. Kind of the same shape as the Sonia G one, but then it's completely bare so there's no eyeshadow on it. So this darker brown one is more of a matte. 
whereas the first shadow that I used is a more of a kind of hybrid shimmer satin. See, so they do sheer out. Let me see if I can build up some of the pigment going in with that darker shade again. And going in with a fluffy brush, same brush. In terms of fallout, I think so far so good. I don't know, I don't see a lot of fallout. I don't think I see any fallout. And I think that these shadows blend together beautifully. So, so far, so good. Now, of course, I wanna use the shimmer shade. I think this is gonna be the star of the show. This is probably gonna be my favorite color. Ooh, this is stunning. Ah, okay. Interesting. So more of a topper shade. On um, the swatch, it definitely looks very opaque. Whereas on the eyes, it looks a bit more sheer. I'm gonna see if I can build it up. Spraying my brush with a little bit of Airbrush Flawless setting spray. Okay, I think this is the opacity it wants to be. Like, it's not gonna be more than this. Then I wanna go in with a Ruffer 03 brush. I'm going in with that lightest shade to highlight the inner corners. Let's continue on to the bottom lash line. Kind of doing the same steps, but then in the reverse. Let's put on some liner and mascara, and then I'll talk to you guys about my final thoughts. Okay guys, so this is the final look with a little bit of mascara and some liner. You know, when you're having a bad makeup day, I don't think doing a cat line is a good idea. So I struggled a little bit. I hope I didn't muddy up the shadow, but let's just go into my final thoughts. So first off, packaging. I think the packaging is gorgeous. I think that there is not that much product in, <laughs> in this particular packaging. I think you're paying for the brands, you're paying for the packaging and, and the overall experience. And I think that the overall experience, just talking packaging alone, does feel looks, it does feel fun and something different. And I really appreciate that. I also appreciate the different color stories that YSL came out with because it came out with some color waves. It came out with some decent like neutral tones, warm tones and cool tones. And I think this is a very great palette for anyone that is like just an office makeup wearer like I am, for example. It's very simple, very go to the office. Is it revolutionary? No, it isn't. Do I have something like this in my collection? Yes, I do. Do I like tones like this? Yes, I do <laughs> like tones like this. Now, let's talk a little bit about formulation. This isn't a baked formula. This is sort of a classic eyeshadow formula and I think it's very similar performing and looking on the eyes as the Chanel uh, Tweed Palette in Brune at Rose. The Chanel Palette, by the way, is limited edition, so if you missed out on this one, maybe this one is interesting to look at. I do have some things to note. One, the shadows were very almost K-beauty fair. So there is some pigment, but the moment you start blending it out, I think it's just very sheer wash of color. So if that's not your thing, you're more into the Natasha Denona, the Pat McGrath, Lisa Eldridge, for example, these are more pigmented shadows and give a very different look. They are striking, they are, you know, in your face. Whereas this is definitely more of a palette that 
is very faint, kind of a sophisticated eye. And it's really hard to go overboard with shadows like this. So I would say it's very dummy proof, but it's probably not gonna be for everyone. So you definitely see some kickback in the pan, but it's not too much. You did have to kind of like tap your brush up, but I don't think I got any fallout in the end. So in terms of fallout and ease of use, I think again, ease of use is amazing. I just think that the preferences for a shadow like this, like there's a very particular customer that likes eyeshadows like this because each and every single one of these, but kind of underperformed in pigments. I actually like the matte. Uh, a lot in this uh, eyeshadow palette. I think the matte formula was pretty well performing because you saw the pigment, you can build up the pigment, but you could also blend it out. I ended up putting some other shadows over on top of it. I think I would do it a little bit different next time, but I kind of want to go for that classy smoky eye this time. The shade next to it, which is my crease shade, may be a little bit too shimmery to go into the crease, but I do think that it's such a beautiful shade for all over the lid. And I think next time I'll put this one all over the lid and then I'll put this topper shade on top. From the swatch, I actually thought that this topper shade was gonna have a lot of base pigment. So it was just gonna be a shimmery shadow, but it's definitely more of a topper shade. And I think it's definitely more of a subtle topper. I think in terms of shine, it's very subtle. It's not too in your face. And again, there's a particular customer that likes toppers like this. The inner corner shadow, also a little a bit underwhelming. I don't mind having my inner corners kind of brighten up. Um, but overall, the look, I actually really like the way that this turned out. I am the customer for shadows like this, so I do like a softer eye. I do like shadows that are beginner friendly because I, if I'm rushing to go out the door, I don't want to fuss with eyeshadows. So in terms of all like overall experience, I do really like it. I just think that if you're maybe a Chanel lover, a Diori lover, you're probably gonna like this, but if you are more in the Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona section of things, I don't know. I don't know if you'll like this. I think it might be a little bit too wash of color for you. I don't know if like 68, 90 is gonna be like the official Dutch price because I got mine from Bangerhead, which is not a retailer that I'm very familiar with. I think on the Sephora France website, they're above 70 euros. So my expectation is they're gonna be in the price range of Guerlain and Tom Ford. It's not a cheap eyeshadow palette. I think it's a fun little number to have in your collection and I think that if you are eyeing these after this review then maybe pick up one first to see if you like the eyeshadow formulation. I will wear this for the entire day and I'll let you guys know in the comment section down below how these were, if they lasted the test of time. But so far I do like how my makeup turned out even though I had a bad makeup day. Uh, and you know what? It is what it is. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you like this video, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you actually like luxury beauty. Check out some of my other videos as well because I do like to follow a few luxury beauty brands on this channel. Comment down below if you have any questions or any comparisons that you want to see. Also, let me know if you wanted to see a little bit more of an in-depth comparison with the Guerlain, the Tom Ford, wet and dry and maybe even the Chanel because I can of course do an in-depth tutorial on that as well. Anyway guys, I'm gonna sign off here. Thank you guys all so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!